Good morning, good afternoon, or good night. Welcome back to another video. Today we're talking about Meta Launch. Now the Meta Launch launchpad, it's been on my radar for a very long while, so I'm super excited to finally cover it. And why is it been on my radar? Why do I think can hold many interesting investment opportunities for you? Well, we're gonna get into that in a bit. I am very, very bullish on some of the projects on this launchpad. I'm going to walk you guys through how to get started, what the investment opportunities are, and of course everything you need to know about meta launch launchpad and if you guys are into it grab a coffee sit tight and i will see you guys in a bit stay tuned All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining me again today. We're going to get into Meta Launch, what it is and how to get started in just a second. Before we do, however, please make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications. Very much appreciated. And with that out of the way, no doubt that I am no financial advisor. So do your own due diligence. And with that being said, let's get started right away because we have a lot to go over right now. So the Meta Launch is a cross chain launch pad and it is well known to be part of the ASFA Meta uh, ecosystem, right? So they have a marketplace, as you can see over here. They also have, um, you know, the Asphalt Labs, that is the umbrella company, basically, and they all use the same Asphalt token. You can use it. You can use it for the DAO governance, the Metaverse marketplace, uh, the, the incubation community. You can use it for everything here on the marketplace, and you can also use it for the launch pad. So we're going to get over everything. We're going to start with the tiers, as that is the most important aspect of a launch pad. After that, we're going to move over to the projects and the potential investment opportunities and the white paper. So definitely stay tuned for everything or use the timestamps down below if you want to skip around. You might be a very busy man or woman. So um, yeah, do whatever you like. Okay, so starting with the tiers, for those of you who don't know, the tiers will actually be the uh, indicator what your allocation will be. Depending on how much tokens you have staked, you will get a certain allocation. I have to say that with Meta Launch, it was quite difficult to find where the tiers were and how much you had to invest. I was a I was eventually able to find it on their medium, which is their blog uh, post. And uh, here we see that they have one, two, three uh, tiers. And three tiers usually indicates a somewhat smaller launch pad. Why is that? Well, the bigger the launch pad, the more investors and usually the more variety of investors a crowdfunding launch pad has. And thus more tiers will be created to satisfy the needs of those many, many different investors. If we, however, are talking about a slightly smaller launch pad, such as ASVA and Meta Launch, then we are looking at less tiers as there are less uh, variety in investors. So we have here tier one, Meta Moon, then Meta Sun and Meta Galaxy. Starting with tier one, we can see that KYC verification is required. So you will have to do the KYC, making sure that the USA residents are going to have a very hard time and will most likely not be able to participate in any of the launches, unfortunately. Uh, so here we also see that the weightage of the pool is one. Now, what exactly that means, you don't know because we don't know the exact size of the pool, but we can see that relatively versus the second tier, which is Meta Sun, uh, that will be a pool of four, meaning that you already have four times smaller pool weight than tier two. And then tier three was times 10, meaning you will only have one tenth of the investment possibility than the uh, largest tier. Now, obviously, it is also a lot cheaper to participate in tier one. So we can see ASFA currently has a token that's going for around two cents. And that means that uh, 2,500, which is the price of the very first tier, is going to cost you 50 US dollars. So that is a relatively respectable amount for a first uh, tier, especially in the bear market. And here we have the tier two. Now, this is obviously going to be a lot uh, more expensive already. That will be 8,000. So that will be 0 0.02 times 8,000. And that will bring us to 160 US dollars. Now, while we're at it, we'll quickly look at what the third tier is as well. So that will be uh, 0 0.02 times, what was it, 18,000? 
Yes, that's 18,000. I'll quickly type it into the calculator as well, just so you guys know. That will be 360 US dollars. So relatively cheap tiers, of course, for everything KYC is required. And all of it seems to be a guaranteed allocation, meaning that there are no lottery systems. So whenever you have a tier, that will already allow you to 100% participate in the launches. Now, this tier system is from January 2022. It's might have changed a little bit. So do your own research and double check if the tier system is still the same and all is still accurate because sometimes they do move around the tier system a little bit. But for now, that is how the tier system looks. So here they do have a uh, example uh, with a, yeah, learning the tier system with an example. We'll quickly go over it. If you already understand everything, you can move over to the next timestamp. For those of you who do want a bit more clarity, let's go over the example to fully understand the tiered system. If a project raises 100,000 US dollars through IDO on our launchpad, the following calculation helps to understand the math behind the token allocation for each tier. The total allocation for the public round will be 95,000 US dollars. Assuming we have 300 stakers for Meta Moon tier, 100 stakers for Meta Sun, and 20 stakers for Meta Galaxy, respectively. Moon tier members will have a weightage of 1, Sun tier members will have a weight of 4, and uh, Galaxy will have a weight of 10. The combined weightage of all the qualifying stakers in this example is 301 plus 104 plus 2010 is 900. The token allocation allocated to each share is 95,000 slash 900 is 105.55. The formula for each number of tokens allocated to a tier is given by share amount and tier pool weight. So they go much deeper into the calculations of the tier system. For you, most important is to understand that the first allocation will already be guaranteed and your pool weight will be one, meaning that you will be punching up against a massive pool weight of 10 of the highest tier. So understand that when you're investing the first tier, although a guaranteed allocation, a very small tier. So you will be able to invest a very little amount, right? So tier two is the first interesting tier and it's not even that expensive, relatively speaking. So yeah, that is all for the tiers. Um, let's now move over to the projects. And before you click off or move over to another timestamps, I want to reiterate how important the projects are for a launch pad. Not only because if there are no launches, it is a massive red flag, but also because the past is a very good indicator of the future. So we're going to look at the upcoming projects, we're going to look at the active projects, and we're going to look at the ended projects. And there is a very special IDO that I'm very, very excited for. And I think that that might be one of the biggest investment opportunities over here on Meta Launch. So without further ado, let's get into the project. So the projects as of right now, as you can see, there are no active projects, which is not entirely uh, surprisingly, right? We're in a bear market, the launch pads are struggling, they don't have that many good projects to launch. And thus it is very common to see a launch pad just not having an overall high amount of launches. So that is not very uncommon. Uh, as we can see, they do have some upcoming projects. We see here Clon and Outlanders. Uh, we also see Xemena. Now I, for one, am very, very bullish and excited about Outlanders. I think this is easily one of the biggest upcoming investment opportunities on MetaLaunch, and it is on the Binance Smart Chain, uh, the whitelist coming soon, and the sales start date is still to be announced. Moving over here, and I just want to dive a little bit deeper into this project. Uh, if you're not interested, feel free to skip forward on the, the timestamps as we will go over the roadmap, the team and the white paper as well later on the line and my price prediction. For now, however, Outlanders is easily uh, one of my favorites here on this launch pad. Now, why is that exactly? As you can see, moving onto their uh, website, at first glance, you can already see that this is an ambitious game, right? Open world, multiplayer, MMA, MMORPG, right? That is the stuff that we like to see. Uh, the, the trailer isn't really loading. That might also actually be my fault. But you can see here on their website already uh, some gameplay on the background, right? 
Uh, they say here a blockchain's first MMORPG with move to earn integrations. That's right, they have move to earn in their play to earn uh, open world game, which is just insane. Um, an MMORPG at the intersection of GameFi, move to earn, and play to earn, accessible to all gamers regardless of Web3 experience. And I have to admit, the graphics look amazing for a, a Web3 game. I would have loved to show you guys the trailer. I'll give it one more shot just to see if it works now. There it is. I think I think I got it working now. Okay, very interesting. There we go. It's not working. Okay, well, oh, it is, dude. Uh, <laughs> it's definitely a bit cracky. Well, I'll just show you guys some gameplay. There it is. There it is. Okay, there we go. So very good looking trailer. We can see that the gameplay is very much cartoony looking, which is absolutely not per se a bad thing at all. I really like how it looks. Uh, if we pause it over here, we can actually see the details in the trailer. Now, if this is actual gameplay, we will have to find out, but this looks just hyper well done and I love it. That's part of the reason why I am so bullish on this project. There are other reasons as well that I will um, you know, talk with you guys about why I think that this uh, might just be easily one of the, the biggest um, opportunities here on this launch pad, right? If we move over here on their website, we can see here the start, play to earn and move to earn mechanic, mechanics. And I want to show you guys a little bit of the move to earn. They say Outlanders is a breaking new Outlanders is breaking new ground with the launch of move to earn capabilities. Outlanders games can now earn both through their gaming activities and by leading a healthy lifestyle. Now that is just something very unique. If for those of you who don't know, move to earn is basically you move in the real world and you earn tokens for that. Now, how exactly do they implement move to earn in an open world MMO RPG? play to earn game, I'm not exactly certain. What I do know is that they are very, very ambitious. They see here um, a couple of numbers. They say here an open world MMORPG with no beginning or end. This is a new type of play to earn. Any gamer worldwide can immerse themselves. Uh, let's see if they have any information about the uh, conquer monsters. Yeah, yeah, I want to learn more about the move to earn, but they don't seem to go very in depth on it. But you do have every feature that you would be looking for in an MMORPG, right? There's open world, there's dungeons, there's guilds. Uh, you have quests, uh, interactability with other players, and of course, there is the play and move to earn mechanics. The graphics looks really, really good, and as you can see, no blockchain experience needed. Of course, that is mostly for the players. The investors will need at least a bit of experience. Uh, blockchain powered, um, freely accessible as it is fully free to play. Um, play to earn functionalities and NFTs and in-game assets, meaning that you will be able to collect, trade and buy NFTs uh, within this game. Here you can see form guilds, acquire territories. Player can acquire territories by gathering other players and monsters. Oh, battling other players and monsters, sorry. Uh, battling guilds or individually, other players will also be able to try and take over your territories. Now, this is something that just interests me a lot. It is what interests me a lot with New World. If you guys were uh, familiar with that game, it was not a big success in the end, but you were able to actually conquer territories from other players and defend territories from other players. And it was amazing. And to see this at least attempted looks really, really promising. And if we look a little bit at the gameplay, we can see that it is basic enough to be realistic, right? We don't want to see anything too crazy because, you know, it cannot become too good to be true. Um, so it's not thus far, right? The, the gameplay looks realistic yet very promising. Uh, everything that they offer is unique and makes me very excited. And your overall website looks very good as well. And everything is fully docked. Here you see their team right? Uh, every, everyone that's uh, involved in here, uh, the partners of this project, we see some uh, relatively large names, uh, including Asva Labs and Black Dragon. So it is a project that I am super stoked for, and I haven't seen it listed on many other launch pads. So Meta Launch does have some exclusive projects that aren't that mainstream in other launch pads, but that are definitely very interesting to look at. Now, 
that is one thing, right? These are the projects that are coming up. So these are the projects that you will be able to participate in if you are on the time. But there's more. We also have the ended projects. Now, why is it important to look at ended projects, right? They already happened. So you can't participate anymore. Well, like I said before, the past is the best indicator of the future that we've got. So seeing that they have done many launches, despite the fact that we are in quite a severe bear market is very impressive in and of itself, right? We are seeing Realms of Eternity, Terrorverse, uh, Creo Engine, uh, Wizardia, Colosseum, and many more all done just in 2022. And then here we see in 2021, they have done their own launch uh, from Asva Labs. Now, most of the launches, all of the prior launches has been done on the BNB chain. And all of the upcoming launches will also be on the BNB chain. But then again, we also have the Avalanche and Polygon chain supported here on MetaLaunch. Regardless though, looking at the ended projects, the most interesting one and the first one at that would be Asva Labs. Now, obviously that is the umbrella company, right? Asva Labs owns MetaLaunch. Right, this is the launchpad of Avalabs, and it's not entirely uncommon for launchpads to, you know, uh, crowdfund their own projects. It's very common, actually. So this already happened. This already, uh, you know, uh, this already took place. Now they do ask me to switch over to the BNC smart chain, so I will quickly switch my network to see if I can get any more information. Oh, we don't get any more information. We just get, you have not participated in the Asphalt Labs token sale. Okay, that's fine. Here you can look at all of the token metrics, right? You can see the token price. So uh, people were able to buy for 185 USD. And uh, of course, that is much, much higher than what the price is now. But you have to understand that the peak was all the way at 57 cents. So if you think about it, uh, that is a roughly 5x, a little bit less, but that is a roughly 5x for the all time high. If, of course, oh, look at this, it even reached as high as 60, uh, 62. So that is definitely some good returns after that the coin did drop, but it took very long before it dropped under TGE price. In fact, it took uh, roughly over a month or so for the price to drop below TGE. So depending on, okay, look, here we have it 10% was unlocked at TGE. So that means that probably because of the high amount of profits that they were able to make right away, most investors already had their profits done by the time that, um, you know, that by the time that they got their 10% of tokens unlocked at the TGE. So those are definitely some good returns uh, that we can see right there. And let's see, 22% uh, unlock monthly for four months, uh, meaning that there was no cliff. All right, so four months, uh, this was the TGE, it was at 12.31. So let's say just the 1st of February to round it off. Uh, best thing would have gone on all the way until around here. Uh, let's see, that is 0 0.06. And of course, uh, yeah, so the later vesting tokens were already, uh, you know, uh, not giving profits anymore, but the TGE and the first month or two of the vesting did give profits to its investors. So you can easily make the conclusion that most investors that invested in the first project here on this launchpad did make profits. Now, it is also worth mentioning that probably a lot of the investors held onto their tokens, probably not the TGE tokens, but there must be plenty of people that are waiting for the next bull run in the price to skyrocket, maybe holding onto their tokens. Obviously, that wouldn't have been the wisest decision, but you always have people doing it. You also had another push over here. Um, but the, even the peak of this rush was still slightly above TGE only. So, you know, uh, not very interesting, really. It didn't spike high enough. And after that, it basically just flatlined. Anyways, not going too deep into the token just, uh, just now, uh, but this was the first uh, launch. Now, they have done other launches, of course, like I said, quite a lot of them, actually. We have here Realms of Eternity. Probably one of these was the, yeah. So here we have the community IDO and here we have the public IDO. Um, community IDO, probably a little bit more interesting to actually take a look at. And 
uh, it's having trouble loading <laughs> once it wakes up. Oh, we already have the token metric, so that's great. So here we see most of the launches actually on meta launch do have TGE unlocks. So obviously that is different per uh, project, but this is the same vesting schedule as the prior project that we looked at. 10% uh, unlock at TGE, a zero month cliff, and then 15% tokens release, uh, complete unlock at the six month of TGE. Okay, now this is Realms of Eternity. Let's see if we can see that on CoinMarketCap. Uh, Realms of Eternity, yes, it's actually there. That's amazing. So it's currently going for 0 0.019. And that I assume is quite a bit down from TGE. Oh, look at this. This is interesting stuff. All right. So 10% at TGE and they got it for 0 0.03. All right. 0 0.03. That is a profit at TGE. And after this pump, even a bigger profit. It did drop below TGE relatively. Yeah, within a month, it dropped below TGE. Here it dropped very much below TGE. It did recover slightly, but the price remained below TGE. Everyone is bullish though. So I, I assume there's a lot of investors that actually held onto the token, waiting for it to grow. Uh, regardless though, uh, the 10% at TGE gave good profits. And because there was a 0% cliff, um, the investors got their tokens quite uh, quick. So also this project did give some returns, but because of the drop after almost directly after the TGE did cause many investors probably to not get big returns. Then again, we're here in the bear market, any returns from a launch bet are appreciated and definitely the TGEs are going quite well. So overall quite an average, right? An average uh, performance here in terms of projects. I'm glad to see that there's upcoming projects to begin with. And I'm very happy to see how many projects they've done from the beginning of 2022 until now. It is more uncommon than you might know. And, you know, it, it does boost the utility of the token a lot, right? We're seeing so many tokens nowadays. I mean, let me actually grab the meta launch token real quick. Um, meta launch, man, why is it <laughs> meta? Nah, uh, let's see, Asva, all right, it was Asva, my bad. Let's get the Asva token out here. And what we can see right away is that uh, for depending on other, depending on what launch pad you look at, right? Because that, that is important, but a lot of launch pads have lower prices than this. And a good reason for that, of course, is uh, this launch pad has more utility to its token. Now, what do I mean by that? They have a whole ecosystem supporting it. It's not just the launch pad, but we also has, have the Asva Meta Marketplace. Right. And uh, of course, we actually have active projects on the launch pad, apart from, of course, the staking and the farming utility. So there is use, there is utility to the token, which allows the token to maintain a price higher than other launch pads in these bearish times. Now, that is good and bad, right? It is good because the people holding the tokens aren't bleeding out money, right? The token isn't just crashing it remains a relatively steady and it's it's also very good because um you know, bad i believe uh, in that in that sense because the prices are, are remaining to be quite high so you do have to pay more to get into the allocation right if the price from a launch pad drops it's easier to get the allocations and the tiers because the token is less expensive right so there's always benefits and downsides to the prices going up or down but if you're already a holder, it's very good. If you want to get into ASFA, it's fine. I mean, it's still a very respectable low price for a launch pad. So it's it's definitely an okay price to enter. So that is the that are the projects. Obviously, I'm most bullish on Outlanders. I haven't really looked into Clon too much. I uh, it's I, yeah, it is also a metaverse related. And uh, that seems to be also a bit of a trend, right? These IGO metaverse NFT projects are very trendy over on, um, you know, the, the launchpad. Um, we see here, Clon is the only avatar you will ever need to access the metaverse. Interesting. So it's more of an avatar creation type of um, site. Anyways, we, we, we would run out of time if I was to uh, 
uh, cover this as well. But it is interesting uh, to see how much focus there is on the metaverse. And it also once again looks like a pretty good project. So I'm not detecting any of those you know, trashy, right? The, the rug pull scam type of projects. So that's good. Um, yeah, I also went through the white paper of Outlander. And again, it just keeps surprising me. And by far, this is what I'm most bullish on, right? I, I've looked at everything else and and outlanders is uh, is the main deal it's the main shiza right we, we we love it we love it we love to see it all right moving forward however because there's a lot more we have to go over for uh, meta launch itself right so um the ecosystem will get to that but for now what is most important is the roadmap now the roadmap has not been specifically designed for meta launch it is more of a roadmap for asva labs which of course are intertwined and they share the same token they share the same team they share the same company so they are very much related to each other so what happens to asva labs is also important if you are interested in meta launch so that is why we are looking at a roadmap of both of the two combined so here in quarter one of 2022, we see the Asva Labs and MetaLaunch Volume 2 website upgrade, uh, followed by the MetaLaunch IDEO Launchpad int uh, integration, Polygon and Avalanche. Now, I was already aware that these were the two new ones because all of the prior projects were still done just solely on the BSC um, chain. And uh, we're not seeing any new projects yet on Polygon and Avalanche. So these two chains have been recently added. And I'm sure new projects on these chains will arrive soon. Here we see Aspa Single Assets and LP Staking Launch on Meta Launch. And the NFT Launchpad Launch on the BSC chain. And here we have a bunch more. I think um, here in quarter two, the most interesting developments happened. We see the MetaLaunch IDEO Launchpad V2 UX upgrade, uh, the release of MetaLaunch user dashboard, and the Aspa token bridge and token listing on various decks. So that is a big one. And then here, IDEO Launchpad Solana integration. Uh, they also did the IDEO Launchpad Terra integration and the MetaFi DeFi Vault launch. So a lot of... Uh, you know, developments being done in quarter two quarters three and quarter four are slash have been a bit more calm we see here the metaphors marketplace launch and the launch of decentralized feasy model for launchpad development of the DAO governance and the DAO based funding framework so we don't have the DAO just yet but as you can see it's been in development and around quarter four ish we should see that um, materializing a little bit more so a pretty good a uh, very clear roadmap we're looking at this roadmap through the white paper, which I am a bit less positive on, to be honest with you. Uh, it looks just like it was kind of typed out in Word. So th there could definitely be some extra work done here on the um, on the white paper. On the other hand, though, most of the things you would need to have in here are listed, such as, you know, the challenges that the company is willing to overcome, um, abstract about uh, introduction, avers, uh, um as as a verse ecosystem um, of course covering meta launch meta launch powered by asphalt labs is the first ever multi-chain metaverse launchpad and incubator it delivers strategic fundraising and growth frameworks to fuel virtual world and gaming economies right so yeah i, I mean let's see the public round is uh, where the guaranteed tiers meta moon meta sun and meta galaxy can participate in the meta community round participants will actively engage in social activities and take part in lottery okay now that is pretty important regarding the um the, the tier system right so the normal public rounds are going to be followed through tiers and the community rounds that is where social uh, activities will have to be done like follow uh, following people on on twitter etc uh, in trade for a lottery ticket so the community rounds are actually the smaller rounds and the more like less guaranteed rounds and then we have the public rounds which will be where your guaranteed allocation and your tier will come into play so that was a interesting uh yeah thing that we kind of missed out on so good to good to good to yeah to see and here we see then the asfa tokenomics also another very important part that needs to be covered of course as the tokenomics will 
well, it will shape the company as it is. So if you're still watching right now and you are interested, like, you know, hey, everything looks good. I'm also bullish on the projects and, you know, Asma Labs in general, right? Bullish on that. Uh, but the tokenomics, you don't really know how that works yet or how their tokenomics look. It's important. So let's go over it real quick. Let's first talk about the ASVA token utility. ASVA is the native token of the ASVA Labs ecosystem. It plays an integral role on all ASVA platforms by facilitating transactions, incentivizing and governance. Uh, the current and planned use cases of ASVA include the following. So we have the native token staking. I mean staking. I hardly call it a utility, but again, you know, they have staking. Governance. Uh, use Users may stake ASVA to gain voting power and participate in governance process to change the product parameters. So this is actually a utility. Of course, if you're a bigger investor, you want to have a say in what the company does and having a lot of these tokens staked will give you voting rights, which will allow you to do exactly that. Uh, then here we have the launchpad assets, of course, for the tier and the guaranteed allocation. Then here we have the metaverse marketplace. The ASVA metaverse marketplace will be accessible with the ASVA tokens. Okay, and then here we finally find the token distribution. Again, I would have loved to see all of this on the website, both including the team, the roadmap and the tokenomics. I feel like that is something that should be listed on the website or at least in the white paper. But uh, again, as long as it is public information, it is fine, even if it takes some searching to, uh, you know, to, to, to find out where it is. But here it is, all good. Uh, we see here that the private A is 8% and we have a private B. So there are two private rounds together making up nearly 20% of the tokenomics. Now, why are there two different rounds? Because there's two different prices, right? Uh, private round A may pay a, a bit more or a bit less than private B. Regardless, it's around 18.4% of the tokenomics going to the private rounds. 1.2% uh, is going to the public. Public being as small as it is because, you know, private is the perfect sweet spot for both the investor and the company. That is where the majority of the money is being raised, right, for Ava Labs. And the public round, uh, it's just a little bit of extra money for the company, is more so for marketing purposes, right? Most of the public rounds will also have like social tasks, stuff like that. So here we see the 5% of the liquidity. Now you can see that they only have 5% liquidity. As you can see over here in the seven day chart, lots of spikes. Uh, why is that? Well, uh, low volume overall, and of course a relatively small amount of liquidity, which causes the price to spike more. So would have loved to have seen a bit more liquidity. 5% in marketing, overall fine. 22% in the ecosystem and 20% team. 20% team being a little bit on the bigger side, but it is still within the realms of normal. Uh, staking rewards will be 20% and the seed round is 7.5%, which is also quite a lot. Now, let's see if we can find the vesting details. There we go. So as we can see, the seed round was 7.5%. And we can see that it was a 5% unlock at TGE, then a three month cliff and a 7% unlock uh, for four months, then 8% over 11 months. So interesting to see everyone got TGE except for marketing and the staking rewards. So it is a bit uncommon to see a um, well a seed round already having coins at the TGE. Why is that? Because they pay such a ridiculously small amount. Usually we are seeing either linear vesting with a 0% TGE or a cliff and then linear vesting because of the uh, token price being as small as is for the seed round. Regardless, we are seeing a 5% at TGE which is of course huge profit, but a guaranteed dump from everyone participating in the seed round. Uh, then also the private round A and B get a eight and here a 9% TGE, which is just a very large TGE for a private round. A public round only getting a 10% at TGE, which usually private uh, or public, sorry, gets a little bit more than that. Uh, liquidity 10% was unlocked. And as I said, the rest had a 0% TGE. 
Uh, the team and advisors have 0% TGE and a one year cliff, and then a 25% unlock every, every six months. Now that is good to see. It does show that the team has commitment, right? They are not going to dump their tokens or give it to themselves very early. A one year cliff is very big and a 25% unlock over six month vesting is also a very long time. So that is good to see. I always enjoy seeing that it is a good sign and yeah, that is a overall pretty good vesting schedule. So that is it for the tokenomics and for the vesting uh, vesting schedule for Asva Labs. Now, moving forward, we are going to look at the social media and the team behind Asva Labs. Both are very important aspects. So make sure to stick around as we look at the last little bits of Asva. Stay tuned. Then as for the team, we can see that they don't have a specialized team for um, Meta Launch. However, they do have a LinkedIn page for Avalobs Labs, and the, I assume that they are very much intertwined, and that the same team uh, from Esva Labs is also behind Meta Launch. So, if we look at the team, we can see here that most of them are uh, located in uh, around Indonesia, Mumbai, um, uh, New Delhi as well. So more of an Asia uh, located team. And uh, there's 37 ish people working or at least listed on a LinkedIn. I'm not exactly sure who is the CEO. <laughs> I, I, again, we cannot find this information over on the white paper or over on the website. And um, you know, so this is what we have 38 employees on LinkedIn and they have 9.2 thousand followers they do have quite some updates over here and uh, one of the partnership announcements over here with the digits bands <laughs> very very cool and of course also other uh, announcements have been made so overall very strong team and very transparent over on uh, right linkedin with a doxed team now as for the social media meta launch does have their own page apart from asva labs a meta launch asva here you see the first multi-chain launchpad and accelerator for metaverse and gaming projects 72,000 followers here on their twitter and they have been going strong since september 2021 so again a very early new ish launchpad to the space right only late 2021 that uh, they started launching projects and they launched their social media so very new ish which of course is not bad whatsoever it just means that they have a longer road to go and a longer yeah just in general right that they're just still working on it and uh, growing which does give more potential they have a really cool trailer over here um, unfortunately i didn't see this on their website because look how awesome this is very very well done and uh, yeah i mean overall they upload they post very regularly this is the 3rd of august this is the 7th of august and the 5th of august over here so uh, this is 8th of august right now right so that they post once a day on average uh, most of these things are just reports, they are updates, they are announcements, just as any other launchpad really does. The, the community sentiment overall is quite good. Thus far, I've only seen people uh, you know, praising the project and just interacting with everything. Also over here on CoinMarketCap, we are seeing a lot of bullish uh, comments and uh, not a single bearish comment actually, which is, I've never seen that before. So that is definitely also something to take into consideration, right? That, what, the, what does the community say? How big is the community? And what do they think of the project? At the end of the day, it's a crowdfunding uh, platform, right? A launchpad, it's crowdfunding. So how big is the community? How bullish is the community? That is incredibly important when reviewing a launchpad. And over here for Meta Launch, we can definitely see Meta launch, I mean, <laughs> we can definitely see a big community, a bullish community and a community with a lot of growing potential. And uh, yeah, overall, good activity on the Discord uh, and the Twitter and also the Medium, actually. I did go through the Medium and uh, I said Discord, by the way. <laughs> I don't think they have a Discord, do they? I mean, worth a check, I mean, real quick. Do they have a Discord? I don't think they have a Discord. No, they have a Twitter, a Telegram, a Medium, and a LinkedIn. 
So Telegram, I haven't checked that out. Twitter, of course, we just went over that. Uh, LinkedIn as well. So the Medium, they post a couple blogs a month, but uh, it's nothing too crazy. I'm not sure why it's not loading. I think I have some Wi-Fi. Uh, <laughs> I'll look into that. But overall, you know, I did go through the medium. They have a bunch of tutorials mostly, and they also make announcements over there. So it's just a regular medium. I mean, nothing too crazy or out of the ordinary there. All right, everybody, that was pretty much all that I was able to dig up on Meta Launch. Uh, there is one more thing that I have to go over, and that is the staking and the farming aspect. Now, the utility of staking and farming, you guys, it is basically there in every single launch pad. It is just something that is there, right? It is required. Obviously, the staking is always there because it's needed to actually get access to the um, to the tiers and to the allocation uh, farming not every launch pad has that so that is certainly something extra uh, as you can see they have everything built in on their website here you can stake your asfa and join the ido launch pad so very neatly well done uh, the ui ux is very good and simple I do have a bit of lag on the website, but it might be my end as well. So I'm not going to complain about that. Uh, here you can choose your lockup period between 7, 15, 30 or 90 days. You can stake Asva and of course connect your MetaMask. Here we see LP staking and you can use Asva and BUSD with an APR of 46%. So here you also have actually an overview with the amount of LP currently locked. We see 9,196 LP is currently locked down. All right, cool. And here, of course, you can click on the pools and that is going to direct you to the pools where you will be able to uh, participate in. But we already covered that. So that is basically everything. There are quite some addresses holding this token, uh, which is a good indicator that people are in fact interested. As you can see, if you go over to the contracts, you will be able to find that out. But overall, right, the sentiment on coin market cap already says quite a lot, right? The bullish sentiment that we are seeing um, over here, deeply undervalued token, great project with a lot of upward potential in the next couple of years. You can see the same sentiment back here at BSC scan with uh, around 2.6 thousand addresses holding the token. Keep in mind, the launchpad has not been live for not even a year. So that is already a lot of addresses and a lot of people holding the token, very low amount of transfers, very normal for a launch pad. You shouldn't be moving around your tokens that much. You should be staking them. Uh, here we see most of the tokens are locked up in contracts. Here we see uh, the biggest individual contract owns around 0.4% of the total supply. So we don't see any big whale standing out, which is also good. The more spread out the holders are, the better for the project and for the balance of the price. So you guys, that was all for today. I really hope you enjoyed. This is a thorough breakthrough, everything you need to know about Meta Launch and Asva Labs. So if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Join the Discord, we're 5,000 strong and you are more than welcome to join. I do an AMA twice every week. So if you join the Discord, you'll be able to participate and I'm looking forward to seeing you there. All right, everybody, thanks so much for watching. See you in the next one. Ciao, ciao.